yeah, 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 uh-huh. yeah, 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 friends and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in to my new video of 21 spiritual things i've learned at 21 i'm definitely in the middle of the biggest spiritual awakening i've had in my life so far so i definitely think some of these things and tools can help you and assist you or just guide you in the right direction because they're things i've already learned myself in my journey so if anything resonates with you in this video please let me know in the comments below that will be amazing that i can connect with you guys on that level anyway Grab a cup of tea or coffee or whatever I've got chamomile here because it's fucking freezing. And um, let's just hop straight into this video. So the first thing that I have learned is we are all one. So we are all the extension of the universe um, just created in a different way. Just think of Adam and Eve, for example, right? So we've all come from the same source, but obviously over generations, it's kind of fizzled out. So it's not as like pure. If that makes any type of sense, I might sound like an absolute crazy weirdo. Makes sense in here. I'm working on it making sense like this as well. Um, but we're all connected. We're all part of this earth and universe. So that is the first thing. I can go on a whole tangent on all of these things. But for the sake of the video, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. If you want me to elaborate on any of these, let me know in the comments below. And I will sure be sure to do a dedicated YouTube video to any of these topics. But anyway, enough rambling. Let's go on to the next. The second thing I have learned is social conditioning does not affect your future or your fate. So we have had soul contracts by the time before we were even born and that determines our timeline and we have chosen that. And not even just that, even if you don't believe in things like that. Just because of your upbringing, yes it may be a lot more difficult as opposed to people that look like they've got it all but they are struggling with their own things, but you really can pull yourself out of any situation and put yourself into anything better or more successful if you desire to and wish to enough. Honestly, I'm really glad for my upbringing even though it wasn't the best because it gives me kind of like character development and it's allowed me to go through things that I can now heal from and kind of teach other people and assist them in getting through that themselves. Number three is guidance is always there for you. So the only mistake we make is not asking for guidance enough. So our guardian angels, our spirit guides and God are always there on call. So whether you pray or you ask upon your guardian angels, even me speaking about it now, I've got goosebumps because I know they're here. We tend to not see the signs that they're giving us such as through thoughts, feelings, intuition, angel numbers, coincidences, things like that. We kind of just brush it off as a coincidence or don't even look at it at all so this is the way that they're communicating with us and the stronger we connect with them and build that relationship the more we're going to see it and the further that they can assist us so the fourth one is as above so below or yin and yang same concept so there's no good or bad um so i believe if something really amazing happens to me i'm not going to be over enjoyable in that moment whereas same goes for negative. So if something really negative happens to me, I'm not going to fall into a huge negative slump. And this is because everything is, it just is. So nothing's good, nothing's bad, it just is. So your car breaks down, it just is. You figure it out and you go about your day. You receive flowers, it just is. Yes, you can feel joy for getting them, but it just is. So you can't wait on your days to be happy for something happy to happen. You have to just find peace and happiness within yourself. So whatever happens, it happens. Yin Yang wasn't actually really a good representation of that because that's more masculine and feminine, but it's kind of showing the balance between the two conflicting things and that neither is good or bad because masculine and feminine, there's no good or bad in that. So why is good and bad a bad thing to experience one or the other? Number five is death is not a negative thing. So this is one thing I've had to really work through myself because I started creating a phobia of death and I think I'll put it up here if there is the actual meaning of that but it lasted for about three months daily I would have panic attacks and freak my housemates out as well with what I would say because every single night I would just go through a panic attack before bed and it was honestly really bad I've never experienced anything so like scary and like something I've just wanted to stop but I couldn't. I met my ex and then he was over every night which kind of stopped the thoughts and also furthering myself in my spiritual journey as well really helped so yes it can be emotional to lose someone and it is an upsetting time when you lose someone you love however it's just the cycle of life and my window is open and if my neighbors are hearing me right now they're probably thinking there's some cuckoo living here for your personal passing away you shouldn't 
be fearful of it. It's just another state of being and consciousness, what I believe. Um, and if you have any of the same beliefs as me, you would believe in reincarnation and your soul is separate to your body and your life force. So where the fuck does your soul go when you die? It doesn't just disappear. It doesn't just decay like your body. So that is a life force and energy your soul it's not just gonna go nowhere um whether it be reincarnated into an animal human or in the astral realm number six is reiki is a powerful healer so i learned this very young maybe like eight years old when my stomach would hurt my mum would teach me reiki and how to do it on myself and i would do it on her my animals and myself everyone can do it we are all made up of energy we are energy and it is an energy healing method anyone can tap into it and it's just kind of like a muscle that you need to work to build stronger um i can i'll do a whole other video on reiki because that's a whole other subject number seven is psychics are bs so this is a bit controversial but i believe a lot of them are gimmicks and they are just scamming because spirituality is trendy now whatnot whatever there are some legit ones out there however i don't think they are necessary because we have that psychic and clairvoyancy inside ourselves all the time anyway. We're born with it. We have it inside us. The only difference is whether or not you practice it or not so you can build it stronger so you get more accurate readings or insight or intuition. That's the only difference between a regular non-spiritual person and a psychic, a legit psychic. So I don't think they're necessary. Um, it is great if you are not as advanced so you can go to them and seek the guidance however i definitely believe in finding it within yourself because you already have the answers within yourself you don't need an external force or person to tell you that you can have things that can assist such as like oracle cards or whatever but it's unnecessary to go to a psychic and a lot of them are gimmicks i've been to two and they didn't tell me anything that i didn't already know myself how do i look like a little psychic today like a fortune teller yeah, I'm getting fortune teller vibes. I love this. I love this for me. Number eight is we chose this life that we're living. So I kind of dipped into that in the previous one, but I believe we have soul contracts. So when we get deja vu, it's because we already know what's going to happen in our life. Our intuition is spot on because we already know and have written down what we're going to do in this lifetime in our soul contract before we entered this new life. And that's why sometimes there's like a glitch in the matrix and that's why we get that intuition or deja vu or whatnot is because we already know what's going to happen because we chose to do that. Um, and I know some people will be like, go through something traumatic and be like, why the hell would I ever want to go through my little sister dying or go through some sort of physical abuse or whatever. But I believe you have to experience everything in life before you can move on to the state of being that you don't need a physical body to be. Um, and that's very deep and that's some like stone of thoughts right there. But that's just what I believe and that's why the not so nice people um, or things that happen to you or things that people do to you, um, it's just a part of their soul contract for this lifetime and they need to experience and learn from being not as good as a, per of a person. Number nine is spirits are real. So I have had, I'll, I've had a lot of experiences with spirits and seeing them, but I will explain the most vivid one. I don't personally remember this because I was too young, but my mum physically witnessed this. I was about three years old and I was talking to the shadow on the wall. My mum saw the shadow. She saw me communicating it with it and she knew it was a spirit. So she was struggling to like put me down to sleep that night. So she prayed to the spirit and said, can you please help me put Cody to sleep tonight? No joke of a lie. Tell me why two seconds later I go to the wall. Bye bye and drop fucking dead asleep. Um, so it's just experiences like that that prove to me that spirits are real. I can't make that up. My mum can't make that up. Um, and I've had adult experiences as well in my past home, actually in this home as well. I've seen spirits, physically seen them with my eyes and they are real, man. The fifth dimension and the astral plane and all that are definitely real. It's just how spiritually advanced you are, whether or not you see or tap into that or not. And your third eye, man, if you open your third eye, be prepared to see these things but again i'll speak about third eye in another video. number 10 is pisces are misunderstood so pisces definitely misunderstood they people think we're this emotional crybaby we are but there is way more to us than that we're the 12th sign in the zodiac chart 
meaning that we're the most intuitive, we're the most spiritually advanced. We pick up different things from all the zodiac signs because we're the last in the chart. And the thing is, I believe we're the most spiritual and intuitive, we're the most sensual and sexual. Um, this is definitely controversial because my Sagittarius and my fucking Gemini people out there are just gonna say, no, we love sex. We no, it's not about that, it's about the sensuality and everything else that goes into play. With that, it's the eyes, man. Like, we've got, we've got the sexy eyes. <laughs> just look at Janae Aiko and Rihanna, come on guys. <laughs> More than just that aspect of it, we're definitely misunderstood in terms of when we come at things with passion and we're vocal about it kind of thing. Or at least my, here's my chart. So this is why I am the way I am. So obviously it's not gonna relate to every single Pisces because I've got my Sag and my Aries placements in the top three, which definitely give me a little bit of round. Unsubscribe for me doing that, that was ugly. We definitely are vocal about things that we're passionate about which can come across as aggressive or people just um, misunderstand us and when we communicate things it's not in a, we're just trying to be understood. Prime example, Michaela Tesla, the way she sticks up for herself and the way she says things isn't what she sometimes intentionally means or wants to portray. Number 11 is you have multiple spiritual awakenings. So I didn't realize this because I thought you just have one and then you continue a spiritual journey for life. Um, but no, you can fall off track. The ego can take over and you can be run by financial or material gains as opposed to your drama and what truly is going to give you internal peace and happiness. So you can fall off track, which is totally fine. You might not stop meditating, you might stop journaling, you might stop doing the things that make you feel good and are on your spiritual path. And that's completely fine. It's happened to me a few times now and it's something that I didn't realize, but be, be prepared to fall on and off the spiritual awakening bandwagon. Number 12 is you can't fully kill the ego. So I didn't realize this. Obviously your ego was put into place before social conditioning in society when we weren't as developed as a world that was put there for fight or flight so that was put there for survival and to protect you and to make sure you don't die when predators are in the way or whatnot but it has blown out into the context of what ego is now let me just put the description here because I'm not even gonna try to explain that you can't really kill the ego away because that obviously is what you go off to survive and protect yourself um, but you can definitely dull down the ego and diminish it to a point where it only needs to be the size that it is for survival or for whatever reason. Creates your personality a little bit, like it makes you unique, it makes you the person you are, but obviously if you're run by your ego, that's a whole other story, but like it does come into play in a positive aspect. You just have to find, you just have to find that balance. Number 13 is weed. <laughs> helps kill the ego. So a bit contradicting to me just saying you can't fully kill your ego, but you can definitely diminish it to a point. And I believe that when I smoke, I just, it's like I have a backpack on and when I smoke, I take the backpack off. And the backpack is full of me comparing myself to other people, me caring what people think, society and social conditioning. It just fully takes out the social conditioning of everything. And I really go back down to the source and what really matters and life force and nature and all that kind of stuff. I sound like such a stoner, but trust me, this is me saying it so well. So, thing. Number 14 is everything is energy. And if you put a microscope, okay, this is gonna sound stupid. I don't know the actual scientific thing. If you put a microscope to your hand and zoom in far enough, you'll see we're not actually physical. We might feel physical, we might look physical, we're not physical. We are all energy that is clumped up so tightly and compact together that it creates this and why it creates anything. We are still all energy. You can never create or destroy energy and that's why I believe with everything with the reincarnation is true because where do we where do we go? Where's our energy go? We're still energy. You can't just will it and then not be anywhere. Number 15 is crystals are powerful. Now crystals hold a lot of energetic energy and I prefer non-polished ones because that's more like energy points that it can bring and that it can go out to the universe and come out. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Even if you don't know the purpose of the crystal that you're picking up, it's going to do its magic. For example, I picked up Malachite. Let's just say I didn't know what it was for. It's still going to advance me in my spiritual awakening and helping with my third eye and developing my psychic and clairvoyancy. So even if you don't know what a crystal is 
meant to do. It's not a harmful, not a bad, just don't get bothered by it. It's just going to do the magic regardless if you know what's going to do or not. Number 16 is guardian angels are always with you. So the purpose of guardian angels and spirit guides are to assist you in your life journey and to be there for you when you need. So they don't come out or they don't come and assist you if you don't ask upon them. That is not their role. If you don't ask for them, they're going to be there, but they're not going to assist you. So the only issue is not trusting in that enough. Just give it a go. Just try reach out and see what happens. Every time that I try and reach out to my like guardian angels, I get chill chills and I feel them and like I get goosebumps and I just know they're here and I feel their warm embrace. Um, but I'll do another video. That is something I definitely want to do a video on guardian angels. So subscribe down below if you want that video. Um, but anyway, next one. Number 17 is being an empath is fucking hard, man. It's good. It's good, but it's hard. You pick up on everyone's energy all the time, wherever you go out, sometimes even just being public and not communicating with people is too hard because you're picking up on the energy. That's why I live alone. That's why I love my alone time. We're in lockdown right now and honestly, even though it's a bad thing for some people, it has just been fucking bliss for me, not being able to see anyone and just being at home with my cats. A prime example of being around people gets too much. I was picking up on everyone's energy and I was feeling really sad and upset because that's the energy I was picking up on. And then when I was crossing the road, there was a car and I didn't realize and they beeped at me and I started crying because they beeped at me. Typical Pisces. <laughs> but just as an example, I was feeling all those emotions to a point where it made me cry over something that I would not gen usually cry about. Number 18 is everyone is spiritual. We are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So people can beg to differ. Um, even if you're atheist, I'm not going to get into it because I don't want to bash anyone's beliefs or non-beliefs, but I do believe even atheists are spiritual. They just haven't woken up or they haven't, this isn't their lifetime to experience, um, the thing those kind of things number 19 is abundance is easy to obtain when you have a healthy relationship with abundance and you believe you're abundant that's going to come to you whatever you say the universe says yes i'm abundant universe says yes i'm broke universe says yes they give you more and more of what you are saying to them because they always say yes um so keep that in mind when you have a negative mindset towards things like money yogi pokey just like every video wants to come say hello and he may oh god my tits oh i was gonna put you down on there but you go and try and flash your mother number 20 is it doesn't matter how the fuck you dress you can dress how you want it doesn't mean you're spiritual or not spiritual a lot of spiritual people gravitate towards a certain style of clothing or aesthetic or home decor anything like that and that's completely fine um it does come down to like the boho or whatever and it does make people feel good but if you want to be a bad bougie bitch or you want to be you know you want to be on your classy bullshit or you want to be on your expensive luxury bullshit doesn't mean you're not spiritual look at people like Nicki Minaj she's fucking spiritual just because she's got a couple fucking zeros in her bank account and she dresses a certain way doesn't mean she's not spiritual um so it's just things like that like i believe you have to be a certain way to be spiritual but that's not the case yeah i'm like dressing like this today but like catch me on another day and i can be like a whole different person so it doesn't matter how you dress that doesn't determine if you're spiritual or not number 21 is everybody needs healing so no matter if it's some really bad trauma such as like childhood physical abuse or whether it be certain type of conditioning your parents put you in or you didn't have a parent present in your life or your parents suffered with alcoholism alcohol abuse or whatever it is there is something that everyone needs to heal from even my children are going to have to heal from something they're not going to have to heal from a lot or as intense as i had to or my mom had to but that's why generational change is important to me um but everyone needs to heal from something Anyway, that is my 21 spiritual things I've learned at 21. I really hope you guys resonated with any of these and please leave your ones in the comments below as well. Let me know some spiritual things that you've learned at your wise age and I would love to just start a conversation below and start a little community and little chat down there. Anyway, also comment what videos you want to see from me. So I don't know unless you tell me. So let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see from me, whether it be vlogs or certain subject, topic you'd like me to talk about, anything, any of the above. Um, please let me know down below and until next time. Bye guys. Mwah.